Breaking down the Michigan offense as the Wolverines get back on the field here in spring practice. we got Nelson Hubble here from Maze and Blue Review. want to remind you that we've got the Big Ten Live show every Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern time taking your calls. Another impressive aspect to this national championship run, Nelson, that just hit me as we prepare to talk about the offensive line is that this has been an offensive line leading team in this three-year surge the mm -hmm. joe moore award this is what we do we pound you hassan haskins first blake quorum on and on this is what we do this is our calling card this is what we're known for and this team had offensive line issues and coming down the stretch against the better opponents had some offensive line issues that were very obvious uh carson barnhart took on the the blunt of the mm -hmm. or the brunt of the criticism and was the most obvious, but they fought through that of having, they, they didn't uh, let it get to them in regards to, okay, what we're supposed to be known for and our strongest part of our team is showing weakness, mm -hmm. uh, but with the resolve of the defense and just putting things together and piecing things together on offense, of course, they worked through that. Um, now, of course, some guys move on. And uh, your thoughts about uh, the offensive line here in 2024? Yeah, I mean, you're bringing back one starter, kind of. Uh, Miles Hinton's coming back, uh, who earned starting snaps last year. Josh Preby is coming from Northwestern, who's a very, very solid guard. And he's going to play right guard for sure. I think he's a guaranteed starter there and one of the best in the conference. And then uh, Gio El Hadi, Giovanni El Hadi, left guard. I think that is a guy that Michigan has known has, is very good for the last three years, and he just hasn't been able to break through because of Zinter and Keegan being there. And so El Hadi is going to get. I I think it's this is this is the line I think is going to start. It's going to be Hinton at left tackle, El Hadi at left guard, center. I lean Greg Crippen because that's the way the team is leaned. But they brought in a pretty highly rated four star recruit, Raheem Anderson, as well in that same recruiting class, and they're both upperclassmen. Uh, and so whoever, you know, maybe the physical component of the center position is important, but a lot of that is also the mental component and whoever maybe takes that step, especially with a new starting quarterback and identifying different blitzes and different things like that and, uh, and different rushes from the defensive line and stunts and communi just communicating in general. I mean, that's, that's huge. So that might be more important than anything at the center position. Talked about preview it's going at right guard. And then Andrew Gentry is who I think wins the right tackle job. And if you know anything about Gentry, he, uh, he I believe he was originally committed to BYU. Uh, and then he went on this mission trip and he was gone like for two years or something in that era. So he's an older player, but he was a very highly rated recruit. One of the top tackles in his recruiting class four years ago now, I think. And so now Gentry comes in, solidifies himself. I think he, he is probably the most talented uh, tackle on the team. I know Hinton has the size and everything, but Gentry, same right there, size, athleticism at right tackle. So I think he wins that job, but there are other guys who who could. Jeff Percy is right there battling with Andrew Gentry, and then you're bringing in some guys uh, who are either true freshmen or uh, maybe some underclassmen like Tristan Bounds or Andrew Sprague who might compete there. Breaking down the Michigan offense, Nelson Hubbles here from Mason Blue Review. Uh, Nelson, I'm going to set you up to give us a very generic answer, so do your best not to, but I apologize for the question because it just lends itself to being cliched answer. Mm -hmm. What is a successful Michigan offense going to look like this year? What What is your best reasonable expectation of what this group can do? Oh, that's tough because I think the passing game is going to be where they struggle the most one way or the other, because when you're breaking in a new quarterback, that's just how it goes and, and new offensive linemen. So usually offensive linemen are better uh, and run blocking when they're getting their feet wet than they are at pass blocking. That's just how it is. So we'll see, you know, if they can gel and they can get a like, solid group there on the line. And if that happens, that will definitely help the passing attack. But I think you can expect Michigan to be a run heavy team again. Uh, goals wise, um, I'm not expecting anything crazy. I'm thinking they're probably going to try to play it pretty safe. Uh, you know, I think it's going to be the type of season that we've seen from Michigan, maybe 2021 style, where you come in with McNamara starting for the first, you know, 
solid starter for the first time after he played a couple games in um, during the pandemic. And you got a lot of unknowns. And so, uh, you know, you have Donovan Edwards, you know what you have in Kalel Mullings uh, behind him and even the depth with Ben Hall, like I mentioned. And so those are guys that, you know, you can trust and also leaning on uh, your offensive line to run block because there are a lot of good run blockers on that line. It's going to be pass pro. That's going to be the concern. And then letting your quarterback ease his way into the year and seeing where he can go. Uh, like we mentioned with orgy ceiling, if he does start, it's extremely high. And so the progress that a guy like him can make throughout the course of a season is pretty Im- incredible uh, because if he's able to develop that part of his passing attack, or a guy like Denegal, who is a very, very capable, uh, very good passer as well, and very accurate. And so he has a chance, too, to come in and ease his way into the offense. And unfortunately, Michigan plays Texas and some very good teams early on in the season. Fresno State is no slouch either, uh, and so that's going to be tough. But you lean on the defense and your running game. It's what's worked for them. There's no reason to get away from it. And so I expect an offense that isn't going to be super explosive in the passing attack, uh, but will have a very good running game yet again, probably uh, one of the three best in the conference. So Nelson, I'm guessing that the best news that you can hear coming out of camp based on your observations, what video you're able to see, obviously there's limited access and so forth Mm -hmm. outside of the, the obvious being the quarterback position. Let's set that aside uh, would be that, some of the guys that you mentioned along the offensive front who are most likely the starters have shown themselves to be proven or solidifying their positions are, are Mm -hmm. getting their, their feet wet and and doing a nice job. And then also maybe that somebody's emerging as a third receiver uh, behind Morgan and Morris. Mm -hmm. That's, that's exactly right. Uh, Someone has to emerge at receiver as that third guy who, you know, potentially could overtake Morgan for, for targets potentially um, because of just the position that they play. Uh, and then you're right on the offensive line. I think if you can come out of spring, knowing those things, you feel really good about where you're at. Uh, if you get to fall camp and you're working through that, and then you know where you are after fall camp, that's just what you want. Uh, but if you don't, then you're figuring it out throughout the season, which is, it can be tough. Uh, but yeah, I think you nail, hit a nail on the head right there. Uh, with how Michigan is hoping this thing will shape up. Nelson, we always appreciate you stopping by, breaking down the uh, the team for us. Uh, hopefully we can uh, get you back in here to talk defense. Yeah, absolutely. I'm absolutely willing to do that. That would be awesome.